Okay. Boiler wash completed. Okay. Yeah, it's clear on this side. Do you see Jim over there? Yeah, he's here. Okay. Yeah, it's clear on this side. We're going to move it back in there. Explorers are working on the 76 over here. And the power car is going to get all painted up. Now we're gonna change it up. Okay, back in here now, and uh, it's been a week actually doing some work on the other side. That's why it's noisy. As you can see, the speeder car is getting done, and the power car is in getting ready for a paint job. As you can see, we scotch brighted it, and it's actually green again. Nice Pullman green that DNM had with it. Right now, I'm about to go into the smoke box and uh, get that cleaned out with the vacuum here. Now, I didn't show you in there last time where it had to be cleaned out. But basically, this is what you got in here. It's pretty dark. What I brought a flashlight. Gets a little rusty around the door edge here uh, where the wire condensates. But in here is the main thing. Uh, this trap here catches all the ash that flies up to the front. And this is why I got to clean out that way the locomotive can keep breathing normal. Now you may ask yourself, uh, just how dirty does it get in on the other side of this? Well, let's see, we got these spark ruster panels in here, and those get larger chunks stuck in them. I gotta knock those out. But down here, as you can see on the floor, hold on, let me get up here a little bit better for you. So, you see on the floor here. Yeah, let's see. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. See on the floor here, there's uh, not as much as you would think there would be because it all flew up over the trap and got caught in there. Here's the biggest deposit right here. Kind of tell where my finger is. Yeah, right there. And uh, directly on the light, comes back here is the uh, the nozzle, the stand for the nozzle. Uh, there's some getting up in there too. So other than that, you can see all it is is a thin deposit of ash and sand. Uh, so not too bad. Uh, you would think it'd be a lot worse. I mean, it's coal burning steam locomotive and all, but it's not that bad. Here's the uh, Here's a side wall going up. Nothing got caught in there. 
And uh, let's see, not on, not on this one either. Uh, just some rust that will probably be knocked out along with the stuff that I try and get. So all together, uh, not too bad. So now I'm going to vacuum it all out. Then we'll, uh, then I'm going to get in the smoke box, uh, the fire box and do the same thing. But if you refer to the last video on uh, maintenance, uh, you saw down the smokestack and you saw pretty much how it should look now after a run. Not too bad, just a little rusty. Okay then. Uh, we got Steve up here scraping off the roof. Okay. Now the after. He's in here. Oh, I got a screwdriver and the flash flashlight, but never mind those. I'm looking now and compared to the last scene where you saw all the ashes and the sand in there uh, previously from the previous run. And that's why I wasn't able to show you last time we were in here because we didn't quite get it all out because it was partially frozen and just sitting for a month. So uh, this time it was much easier to get out. As you can see, uh, there's very little left, just some in the crevice there, uh, probably in between the plate. There's a nice buildup, but we don't have to worry about that till the annual. You can see down here, let me get the lay on. Uh, this plate here, this is probably where it's starting to collect behind here. You can see a little bit on the edges all around it. So uh, when the annual comes, uh, which will be after Train Expo, it's so probably in July and August there. I will take these pieces out here and clean out under there and make our inspection of the smoke box. That's when we got to look on in here too and remove these uh, spark rester plates uh, and get all in there and make sure that nothing is uh, uh, cracking or any of that. So uh, I'm going to climb in under here and show you where I cleaned in there because now that I've cleaned it you can actually see uh, um, the bottom of the uh, tube sheet and all the superheaters so I will climb in there and get that for you. Okay so now I'm back in under here and uh, you can see where I've cleaned mostly. Again during the annual this will be even more thoroughly cleaned than this but before the ashes and the sand were actually up towards uh, the top of the very bottom tubes tube holes there that you can see at the bottom of the, of the plate. So it wasn't going to be breathing well unless we blew it out even better. And by that I mean uh, turn on the blower and hopefully get it a better draft to uh, suck some of that uh, ash out through the spark arrestor and then the gases can escape through the smokestack. So here are the superheater tubes and uh, they're a little bit more cleaned off than I took the vacuum to them and uh, there seems to be no problems at all so far. Everything's holding pretty well. And uh, you can see up the side here uh, where they've ended and the smaller tubes, uh, the smaller blue tubes are and uh, they're not too bad either. They're much better than the ones at the bottom which were getting clogged with the ash. And uh, before the last run we ran with a different kind of coal and that might have been part of the problem. We were getting so much uh, at the front, at the excuse me, the back of the engine, and there wasn't much in here, but there was in the front plate there, uh, at the very front of the smoke box when you open up the door. Anyway, here's uh, here's why you can't see down the smokestack into this plate. Here is uh, this plate, and uh, this is the bottom plate that protects the. Uh, superheaters from the, the spray of the nozzle which is shooting the steam trying to get straight up the smokestack. And we got this wall here which is right to the outside here where my foot is. Which is that section you saw earlier where the air draft is coming through and dropping the ash uh, on the inside of the door there. And uh, it's trying to, the draft is coming through this way and uh, hopefully the ash is pulling directly out and then you'll drop it right in that plate. Steam is shooting right up this uh, line here and that's what's ha helping draft from the front the, uh, the ashes from the firebox. 
in all the gases. The gases are, sh are supposed to shoot up while the ash is collected. Further on the inside here. Moving on in. Now that all the dust has settled, we'll be vacuuming and uh, cleaning this place out. Although I am kind of filthy right now because of it. Okay, so you can see in here, there's a little bit of deposit left, but like I said, during the annual, this will all be cleaned out. Here's the back wall here that is, that is separating the superheaters from the uh, rest of the smoke box chamber. And as you can see, there's no opening at the top or on the sides, just here at the bottom, this big area here. I'll try and get all the gases and the ashes through the tubes and out th towards the smokestack. So, it's shooting around the nozzle and this area here. And uh, at the same time, helping to heat all these superheaters, reheat the steam that's going through that. And up here is the header that they're all connected to where the throttle is. And that there, that opening is for the throttle valve. So that's the engineer's side. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, that, that'll need to be cleaned out during the annual too to, to the Spectre A leaks. But right now, uh, based on the evidence that I see, there's no leaks in it so far. And there's really no leaks in the soup here either. Let's see if I can see... Okay, here's we got some condensation here. Most likely because the engine hasn't ran in a couple weeks now. This is from uh, this is this is not because they're leaking, but this is because that's cooled down here, and then it's like evaporative transpiration. You know, like on the outside of a water glass, when you uh, when you pour a drink into it and it's colder, the water uh, vapor condensates on on the outside of the glass. It's not part of your drink. It's uh, actually part of the water that's in the air, the bar droplets. And they're cooling off and uh, uh, forming on the glass. So this is kind of the same thing, only it's forming on the metal. And uh, it happens especially when you're heating up. All that happens. What you're hearing now is the brakes outside squealing from the train that's being put in here. So uh, don't mind that. Uh, you can see some more ash deposits there that I was able to get in the vacuum, but will probably be blown out once the engine starts up again. So no need to worry about that again. The annual's coming up, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, nothing's happened so far, so we should be all fine. Still not sure what these brackets are for on either side. There's the engineer's side. You can see they're kind of bent. Both of them are bent like that. There must have been must have been when it was built, the idea was to have a bar in place across all the superhero tubes here to help uh, keep them in place. I'm guessing that's what they're for, or either that or something with the wall here to do that. I'm not sure. He never put anything back uh, on it, on them, uh, when he put this area, when we put this area back together, so uh, I'm not sure. Another thing I want to point out with the superheroes is how tough they are to put in here or take out. Because each one weighs about uh, well, several hundred pounds. I'm trying to think if it's, uh, if it's a full ton or not. But yeah, they're pretty heavy. And there's 52 of them, 52 different units. As you can see, there's, there's four different uh, pipes making up just one. Because you got the one line going down and then coming back and the same thing on the other side to make a whole unit. Basically, the condensed steam that didn't get used in the boiler the first time is falling back into here and going down one side and being reheated and put back up into the throttle to be reused again instead of being wasted going out the smokestack. That's what makes us a superheated steam engine. And like I said, it's tough to put it in here. Our first thought was uh, try and just get as many guys as possible, but then we get stuck on, uh, uh, on one of the sliders that's, uh, uh, that's welded to them and uh, wouldn't go in as far and we didn't have anyone on the other side who could pull them. We, didn't, we don't have the device to do that. Uh, supposedly you're supposed, you're supposed to be able to use a chain ball, chain them up, and then one guy should be able to push them in once they're at the right height. That is, you know, if you have all the right tools. But one of the things we wanted to do was uh, make it slippery. We didn't want to use oil because uh, that wet would wear out very fast and would be all dirty and messy. So we used uh, Dawn, you know, some uh, 
some degreaser uh, soap and put it on the bottoms of the sliders and they slid in pretty good but then Kevin told us to stop because he thought that when the inspector came he'd see the liquid in there he'd think it's water and that they make us retube the boiler because they don't know uh, they think that white was leaking water so although I thought the one way you could prove that different was to show them that uh, you could spray some water in there and show them that the bubbles come out maybe it was just soap but I digress on that one and uh, now you know all about this here these are this is the bottom of the branch pipe that's going to the uh, to the uh, steam chest on the uh, farm side. Here's the one on the engineer side. Needs to have some welds put in because you can actually see the outside on them. But there's no, they're not big, really big enough to cause a problem at the moment. But then once the annual comes around, they'll probably weld those shut on there. So no need to worry about them now because all works. But probably going to need to be done in the future. Probably this whole ring is going to need to be replaced the way it's getting pitted. So. Yeah, I'm going to make my way out of here now, and uh, uh, if, if you'll refer to my video from last time, and look at the part going down the smokestack, you'll be able to see the top of this uh, nozzle here, and just exactly how that works, and I explain a little better than that. Okay, from inside the 1225, here we go. So, uh, what are you going to do today, Nick? Whatever I feel like, gosh!